Hey everybody, wanted to make a new Vinyl Finds video. Um, since the last time I made a video, I have come across just a bunch of new records and I'm really excited to show you these. I have a lot of Beatles stuff, uh, a lot of solo Beatles stuff, and just other artists as well. So, first things first, uh, I finally picked this up. This is the Beatles White Album 50th Anniversary um, Deluxe Box Set. Now this is the vinyl edition, so this has um, just the standard White Album, well not standard, but the standard double album uh, with the new stereo remix by Giles Martin, and it also has the Esher demos on here as well. So you get four LPs, and I, I was holding off buying this for a really long time because I already had the standard um, two LP uh, Giles Martin Stereo Vinyl Edition, which I enjoyed a whole lot. And then I had the six CD deluxe box set as well. But I was reading that this box with the vinyl has a different pressing than the actual standard two um, LP one that you can get. This one, these ones are pressed in Germany and they're supposed to sound a lot better and they totally, totally do. Um, the quality of the records, I think, is better. Just the overall mastering, the pressing, it's just a whole lot better. And that's why I picked up this box. Uh, I got a really good deal for this one. Uh, I got it brand new. I think normally it goes for like 100 bucks online, but I got this on eBay for like 60 bucks. So I was kind of holding out to get it for a better price and I actually finally did. So I'm really happy to pick this up. I won't show you the contents of this because other people have made fantastic videos showing you exactly what's inside here. But uh, there is the back of it. And it's just a really cool box anyway. It looks really, really cool on the shelf sitting next to the uh, six CD um, uh, deluxe edition box set that I have already and next to the Sgt. Pepper box set that I have. So just a really cool addition to my Beetle collection and I'm really happy to get it. Bobby just jumped, jumped down over here, Bobby the cat. So if you heard a, a thud, that was him. Okay, uh, moving on, I picked this up. I got this used, but it's pretty much brand new. Uh, this is the Beatles Red Album or 1962 to 1966. I always have to look because I always kind of forget the years there. Um, but this is, uh, this was made in 2014. This comes from the 2009 remasters. Um, and I picked it up because it was in one of my local record shops. And as you can see, it's totally in great shape. And I got it because it was, it was only 10 bucks. And I was just kind of curious to hear um, how, how it sounded, this, this particular pressing sounded. And it sounds very good. Um, this is the one that was released by the Universal Music Group, but of course it's on the Apple label. And I have the blue, the I already had the blue, um, the blue album of this, the exact same year uh, and pressing and everything like that. So now I can kind of put them together. So it just made a lot of sense to pick this one up for me. And it's kind of cool. The one cool thing that I like about this is that it comes with a very nice insert that the standard or the older pressings of the Red Album just don't have. So I was really happy to get that. I think it's always cool to have those added extra little features. So Beatles Red Album, I'm happy to get that. Now I already made a video uh, for this one, but I'll just show it really quickly because I did. Um, I've had time to listen to this one a lot more. This is the Paul McCartney um, Amoeba gig. Uh, this is the uh, double LP edition. Well, I guess there only is. Well, no, that's not right. This is the new one that came out, but there they did release an EP a couple years ago of the Amoeba gig. But this is the two LP. Uh, this just came out, I think, like a couple week, couple weeks ago. Uh, it sounds great. I really, really like this a whole lot. Um, I'm really happy I picked it up. I will say, as far as um, the packaging goes, I think they could have done a little bit better. It's not a gatefold. It's just like that big. You know, they give you like a big space in there to put the two the two records. And each record, the sleeve that comes in, it's just like this like crossword or, or like word search thing on both sides, which is kind of clever, but at the same time, I would have probably liked a little bit more um, information to look at, you know, like, I don't know, like song lyrics or something like that. But that's just a very small complaint. Uh, but the audio quality of this is great. The show itself is really, really cool. Uh, Paul, his voice sounds great. So totally worth getting if you haven't picked this up already. The Paul McCartney Amoeba gig record. Okay, this one, this next one's really, really special. I got this yesterday. Uh, this is something I didn't think I would ever 
um, buy because it was just always so expensive and I didn't really find it essential. I still don't, but I'm happy to own it now because I got it for the right price. Uh, this is the Concert for George. This is the 4LP um, box set. And this, I got, so yesterday I was looking around at one of my record stores. Um, I call it the bigger record store out here. And they stay open kind of late. So I was there kind of late last night, walking around, just strolling around. I really wasn't gonna buy anything. But I saw they were having um, a bunch of sales on their box sets. So I was looking at a bunch of those. They had a bunch of Led Zeppelin box sets. They had a couple of other ones that I was kind of interested in. Uh, but then amongst the pile, this was like behind like a Chuck Berry box set or something. I saw this and they had it listed for 40 bucks. It was actually 38, it was like 38.99. And the original price of this was $124. So I could not pass that up. And it was brand new in the box, totally sealed. Um, so I picked it up last night and I'm so happy I did because it's really, really good. Um, like I said, you get four LPs. Um, the, the, the fourth record in here though, it only has music on one side. The other side has like an etching, which is really cool. In fact, I will show you that just to give you an idea of, of how the box set is. So that's how the records are, are packaged like that. And you get a cool picture of George on there. And then they're in their own sleeve within the sleeve, which is very cool. It's got a cool design. I'll show you this etching here. So you got one side of the record with music, and then the other side, here's the etching. I don't know if you, oh yeah, you can definitely see that. Very cool little feature there. They could have just left it blank, but they made this very neat etching, which I think is really a cool move. So, um, yeah, this, this box set, like I said, it's not essential, because if you have the DVD or the Blu-ray of the concert, that's really what you want, because that just sounds just fantastic and it's just so cool to watch uh, all those musicians together but definitely having the records is, is nice too I just listened to this uh, a little bit last night and a little bit um, this afternoon while I was eating my lunch and it sounds great um, I don't know if it sounds any better than the DVD I haven't I haven't seen the blu-ray but I don't know if it sounds any better than the DVD I don't really think it does it kind of sounds pretty much the exact same so not essential to have this on vinyl, but definitely cool to get it if you can get it for a good price, which I did, and I'm very happy about. So, Concert for George, excellent, excellent uh, addition to my collection. Okay, so those are my Beatle finds. Now I'm gonna move on to other uh, artists that I've picked up recently. So in my last video, you probably heard me talking about how I tried to find this Elliott Smith record uh, called figure eight and I bought a copy of it and it was just the pressing was absolutely terrible and I took it back to the record store and they, they were really cool about it no problem well I did some more research and I found um, online I found this copy this is known to be a, a nice sounding pressing and it totally is this is a European uh, pressing of this um, Elliot Smith record this is figure eight which happens to be my favorite Elliot Smith album it's really really great uh, and this one was made, uh, for those of you who want to try to get a good pressing, of this is the 2013 uh, Geffen Records pressing, and this is pressed in Europe. Um, and it sounds really, really good. So, oh, there's Bob. He's wandering around up there. Um, it sounds great, and I'm really happy to add it to the collection and, and kind of, I don't know, right that wrong of when I picked up that one pressing that was terrible and it just sounded awful. It kind of made me think like, oh man, I wonder if I can ever find this album um, with a good pressing. And this is it. Uh, and I got this one again on eBay just because it was a European pressing. Oh, Bob's going to inspect this, uh, this camera right now. Go on, Bob. Okay. He jumped up on the shelf. So anyway, this is Elliot Smith, uh, figure eight, and it's just a great record. If you haven't heard this, it's it's essential listening in my opinion uh, and a side note he recorded um, most of this record at Abbey Road um, and he used a bunch of the pianos that the Beatles use like he uses like the Lady Madonna piano on a bunch of songs and you can definitely hear it in there so just a very 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 cool record okay and another 90s um, album that I picked up this is by Nirvana this is their debut album called Bleach and this is a repressing, um, this was released in 2009 by Sub Pop. 
And I just, this is never an album I just don't really know much about. Um, I like Nirvana. I like In, In Utero is my favorite album by them. Uh, but I also love Nevermind, obviously. And I also love uh, MTV Unplugged, another great one. But I never had this. Listened to it yesterday and it's very raw. Uh, but that's probably uh, one of the good things about it. It's got a cool picture there. Got a very simple other side there, just says Nirvana Bleach. Here's what the record looks like. We have side A, which is kind of like a takeoff on the old Verve uh, label. Um, and then you have side B. And it's on heavy, heavy vinyl here. It sounds good to my ears. Um, I've obviously never heard any other pressings, so maybe there's other ones out there that sound better than this one, but I got this for a good price, so I was happy to get it and add it to my collection. So that's Nirvana Bleach. Moving on, I picked up another uh, new uh, new record that came out. Uh, I think this came out about a month ago. This is Neil Young and Stray Gators, and this is uh, Tuscaloosa. I believe that's how you say it. Um, and this is a live album, and it was recorded... Um, it's from the same time period as his album Time Fades Away, uh, but these are just like a different selection of songs and it sounds really, really good. And this is part of the Neil Young Archive uh, series and it's a double album. And you got a cool gatefold there. And oh, here's the back, I don't know if I showed you that or not. Here is the first record in her sleeve, cool picture of Neil there. And then he did this really cool um, reproduction of the Reprise logo, or label rather, not logo, but logo too, I guess. Uh, and this sounds great. Um, all of the Neil Young Archive series releases sound so good. I mean, Neil Young, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is like a, I guess, I, don't, I wouldn't know if you call him an audiophile, but he's very adamant about he wants his records, he wants his albums to sound the way they sound um, to his ears. So you can kind of you kind of know if, if Neil Young has released it, it has his stamp of approval uh, and it sounds great. So this is an excellent live album. Uh, I think it's better than Time Fades Away, to be honest with you, as far as the song selection is better to me um, and the recording quality just sounds better as well. And the band just sounds like they're in uh, better spirits seems like they're having a lot of fun. So that's Neil Young and the Stray Gators. Okay, now moving away from new vinyl, um, I picked up a bunch of other records. I got this one, which I was really happy to get. This is The Kinks. This is their album, Arthur. And I wasn't really familiar um, with this record, but I've been listening to it and I love it. It's so good. It has a song in here, uh, Victoria, which was, I guess, like the hit song from there. Uh, this is an American pressing and this is again this is on the reprise label. Reprise reprise. Uh, it's got a gatefold which is kind of just interesting <laughs> illustration. And I will show you the record. It's got the original early pressing here because it's got the uh, two-toned label. And that's side one, and this is side two. And the sound quality on this is phenomenal. Um, Kinks records are kind of known for their for their really good recording quality, and this one is so good. It's just so raw. Um, the drums just pop out at you. The guitars are so electric. Uh, it's just really, really good. And the songs are all just excellent. Uh, just one after the other, just classic, classic tunes. So if you want to get into the kinks and you want to listen to some of their like later, uh, later stuff, this might be a good place for you to start because this is a really, really cool, cool record. Um, and this is actually my favorite like time period of the kinks because I think they recorded this one right after um, Village Green, uh, the Village Green Preservation Society, which is like considered one of their all-time classics. Oh, Bobby sees some birds outside, so he's going to be making some noises. So just if you hear meows and that's just Bobby. Anyway, this is The Kinks. Arthur, fantastic record. Happy to pick it up. Okay, next I picked up two records by uh, Procol Harum. 
And they're a band that I've always liked, but I didn't really know much about them, um, other than just the, their big hits, like Wider Shade of Pale, and uh, She Wandered Through the Garden. Um, this is a record that I was reading about online. This is called Home. And this is an American pressing on A&M uh, Records. Uh, I would like to get the British pressing because I know that's supposed to sound really, really good. This one, though, does sound good as well. Uh, it's a cool gatefold. And this cover is very bright and kind of fun. The music inside of here is anything but that. It's all has like a theme of death, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Oh, there's Bobby again. He's chirping away. Um, yeah, the music is very, uh, very dark and just very, very interesting, but really, really good. Um, it's on the, there you go, the Gold Tan A&M Records label. And like I said, it, it sounds really, really good. Uh, I believe that, let's see, the stampers on this. No, I'm wrong. I thought it was stamped by uh, Sterling, but it's it's not. But it's an early stamper. I remember looking it up. But anyway, if you care about stampers and stuff like that, it's it's an early stamper, and that usually not always, but it usually indicates that it sounds great. And this one does sound really good. Um, also, extremely clean this record, which I was really happy to get. So very cool, cool album. And then I got another one by Coco Harum. This is uh, Broken Barricades, and this one's great too. Has a song on here called uh, Simple Sister, which really, really is a nice heavy rock song. Um, and yeah, it's uh, just a great record. And it's got this kind of cool cover where it has a cut out there. And this one is also on the uh, the Tan A&M uh, label. I won't take it out, but um, this one sounds even better, in my opinion, as far as the sonic quality um, than Home. But it's... Home still sounds good, but this one has an edge on it. The drums on here are just unbelievable. And the guitar by Robin Trower, great. So if you haven't heard this, pick it up. Okay, then I got this Stones record, which I did not have. This is the Rolling Stones, uh, Black and Blue. And this is considered to be, um, from what I've read, the best recorded Stones album, uh, as far as the audio quality is really good. And I have to agree it sounds great um unfortunately in my opinion the songs aren't quite up to the normal stone standard um doesn't mean it's not good because it is good but this is like also known as like kind of like their jam album where they have like kind of long songs long jams um it's got a cool photo there and then of course the front cover it's got a cool shot of them um but it's not to say, like I said, just because it's a jam album doesn't mean it's not good, because it is good. And it's got a cool inner sleeve here where it lists what everybody plays. Um, and I'll show you the record itself. It's on Rolling Stone Records, their own label. And this pressing sounds great. And I believe, yeah, this is a Sterling, um, has Sterling stampers on both sides, Sterling LH, which uh, from what I've read, is like that's the this is like the one to get, and it sounds really really good. So if you want to hear just excellent sounding, um, an excellent sounding Stones record, this is a good one to check out. Uh, my favorite song on here, uh, I believe, what was the name of that one? Uh, I think it's that the Motel one. Uh, yeah, Memory Motel. It's like seven minutes long, but it's really really good. So you should check that one out. All right, a couple more to go. Uh, I picked up this record, and this is another one I picked up because it's known, um, the audio quality in this is really, really good. This is uh, James Taylor, this is Gorilla. And I picked this up because, A, it was very cheap, I think I got this for like five bucks, but the record is in such great shape. It's like it was never played, uh, which is, really, really cool. Uh, sometimes like these James Taylor records, people play them to death because they love them so much, which is great. Uh, but this one's pretty much untouched. Um, and I listened to it and it sounds great. Uh, I was really, really impressed with the sound quality on here. And I believe this is another Sterling. No, maybe not. Well, either way, it sounds good in my ears, so I'm uh, happy with that. And it's got a bunch of great songs in here, like 
the classic songs like Mexico that has backing vocals by uh, David Crosby and Graham Nash, has How Sweet It Is To Be Loved By You, which is the Marvin Gaye cover, um, just a bunch of really, 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 really good songs on here. So happy to pick up James Taylor, Gorilla. Okay, and the last two, I picked up two records by Dire Straits. I'm trying to get into Dire Straits. Not hard to do because they're excellent. Um, I picked this one up. This is uh, Making Movies. And this is an American pressing. Uh, I know that British pressings are supposed to be far superior as far as sound quality goes. But I'm just kind of trying to get an introduction to Dire Straits and these records. So the American pressings are available to me at the moment. So that's why I'm picking these ones up as they come. And this one's on the white Warner Brothers label. Has a bunch of excellent songs on here. Uh, Romeo and Juliet and Tunnel of Love are two of my favorites. Uh, Dire Straits records, you can really never go wrong with them because Mark Knopfler is a genius and his guitar playing is great and his, his work, lyrics are always really, really clever. So I was happy to get this. Then I picked up probably Dire Straits most um, legendary album. This is Brothers in Arms and this is a record that I've never owned but my parents had it and growing up I this was just playing all the time. I remember hearing Money for Nothing and uh, The Walk of Life just constantly either on TV or my parents. I know my parents had the record either they were playing the record or the cassette tape at that time. Uh, so it brings back a lot of memories for me of my childhood. Um, and it's just a really, really cool record. And it's one of the first um, digital records where it was recorded um, to digital tape, which is kind of cool. Uh, and this is, again, this is a US pressing. So I would like to get a British pressing of this because I'm sure it sounds better. But it's got a cool label here, the Warner Brothers label. And again, this is in, this record's in really, really nice shape, um, really clean and Sounds excellent to my ears. Um, so I'm happy to add it to the collection. And if you haven't heard it, but I bet you, I mean, I think everyone in the world has heard this record, but if you haven't, it's definitely worth checking this out, Brothers in Arms. Okay, well, that's it for now. Uh, I do have some very exciting announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I will let you know about those uh, as they happen. And, um, yeah, oh, by the way, I just wanted to do a little little rant here at the end. Uh, not to sound too much like me and Mr. Mayo or take away from his fantastically funny um, rancid, uh, rancid Mayo rants, which are great. Um, but I do have to say this. So I have a, one of my videos on here that gets a, a lot of plays, which I'm so thankful for, um, and a lot of comments, which I'm also thankful for most of the time. It's my Beatles album uh, ranking video where I rank the Beatles albums uh, from my from my least favorite to my favorite, which is an impossible task. Uh, and I I remember this by the now this video I think the video is like two or three years old by now. Uh, but I remember thinking when I was making it like you know should I even make this video because all the Beatles albums are great and I change my mind all the time about which ones I like more or less or whatever right it's just how it goes. But I did make it because I remember at that time, a lot of the other vinyl community um, people that I really looked up to and respected were making those videos, like Mean Mr. Mayo, Fit to be Tie-Dyed, um, uh, that, that whole crew, right? So I was like, I'm gonna do it too, because it's, it's cool, it's really fun. It gets um, people talking about the albums and it's fun to see which one, who likes which ones and all that kind of stuff, right? So I did it um, and like I said, it's it got a lot of views. It gets a lot of comments to this day. But recently, there was this one person on there who was just so negative about it. Um, he, you know, calling me a liar because he's because I. Here's the reason he called me a liar. He says that I shouldn't have included Magical Mystery Tour uh, in the list because it's not a, a, a official Beatle album, which I would actually agree with him. At the time, it was just an EP the Beatles put out. In, in Britain, but in America, it was put out as a full album. And eventually, as we all know, when the Beatles released the CDs, it became an official Beatles album. It's considered a part of their studio albums, which is why I include it in the list, which is why everybody who made a Beatles top 10 or whatever, top album list included Magic Mystery Tour, because 
it's essential. You've got to have it in there, right? So anyway, he was very upset that I included it, which is fine. That's his opinion. That's okay. But then he was calling me a liar and I should have just not responded to him. I shouldn't have responded, but I did. I don't know why, because it bothered me, I guess. So I responded to him. Uh, and I was trying to be nice at first. I explained, you know, that what I just told you about how I was mystery tour. I know it was an EP, but then it became an album. And then the Beatles did accept it themselves as an album. So that's why I included the list. He's, then he responded with, well, at the beginning of, of your video, you said that um, you were just doing the British albums because that's what the Beatles wanted and blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, got through this whole thing. He called me a liar again. <laughs> and then I stupidly... I think what I said was, okay, well, great. Well, now that we've established that I'm a liar and that you're a, uh, and I, I said, uh, I called him a S head. Well, that didn't go over very well with him. And he reported me to YouTube, which I found kind of funny. Nothing happened, of course. It just, YouTube took down um, that whole comment thread. And I tried to block the guy from the channel. He might be watching this video now, but I just want to say to you, sir, I, you know, I don't, I'm just making these videos for fun. I don't want to cause any problems with anybody. And you're probably a really nice guy. And you probably, for some reason, something in my video really bothered you. And that bothered you a lot. And you're entitled to your opinion. So I'm happy that you have your opinion and that you're able to express it here on YouTube. That's great. But just know, I'm making these videos for fun. I don't get paid. I don't, you know, the Beatles aren't endorsing me obviously <laughs> and uh so just try to keep that in mind maybe next time like you know i'm just some i'm just some dopey guy who likes records and likes to make videos about them and talk about them with all of you so that's all i just wanted to say so uh peace you know let's all be let's all be civil and uh, use this wonderful platform to talk about all the great music out there and uh all of our uh, crazy obsessive record collecting. Okay, well that's it for now, and uh, more videos to come. So we'll zoom in on Dire Straits here, and we will talk to you later.